Okay, so for an axonal metric, all you're gonna need to do is trace your original floor plan shape of your exterior wall. Now I've said double your exterior wall, so when you do trace this, you're gonna actually trace the inside line because that's what counts for the space, the square footage. So if this was doubled, I'll quickly double it, maybe that will help. Actually, I'm not, I don't want to trace that. We're tracing just the inside line, okay? On this level, it would be doubled, but we're only going to trace the inside. Does that make sense? So trace the inside footprint, whatever your shape may be. You could have a shape like this one up here, or you might have just a simple box. And this is um, pretty simple. You can use your triangle. And you can do like I told you, on, remember back in our perspective drawings, where I would line the bottom of my triangle up with the bottom of my page, and then I'm just going to slide it around. So these angles, this is a, a 30 degree angle already, and all I'm going to do is do this. I'm just going to slide this and make sure the bottom of my triangle is parallel with the bottom of my page. I'm going to go to the edges of my shape and bring them all up. And right now I'm just going to bring them up different heights, it doesn't really matter, you can kind of approximate. I'm going to do something like that, and then I'm going to determine how high I want to make this wall, and I'll use my grid paper line to help me put in a parallel. So I'll choose either this one or that one, I think I'll choose this one. You just have to find one to start on, and then I'm going to adjust my other heights, and I'm just going to follow the grid paper along to connect to my other walls and to keep on parallel. So now I've got that one, I'll work my way over and I'll just use those grid paper to kind of, instead of lining up my triangle with the page, I can just line the triangle kind of up with the grid and that'll help me keep things square and parallel and perpendicular. So now I've got my 3D box, okay? My 3D cutaway. So what gets confusing about these is until we start putting in details, they start to kind of flip around. Like this becomes the top, this becomes the bottom, and vice versa. So if you can stay with me a little longer, I'm going to show you how to do this with uh, holsters. And we'll just find his entrance. What I usually do is I, I find the entry. And it's right here is his main entrance. So what we're going to do then is... Again, traces floor plan, the inside footprint. So it's here, here, here. So it's, it's kind of a tedious task in the beginning. We'll actually do this whole inside wall. I'm just going to do a part of it here, and then I'll stop. So I think you guys will get the idea. Let's just do this whole front little half. Okay, then I'm going to um, take my triangle and I'm going to line it up with the bottom of the page or I can line it up with a grid line, okay? And I'm going to use the 30 and I'm going to bring this up. And we're going to bring it up on every corner. Now, da David, I keep calling you David today. Uh, Ethan's got a pretty complex shape. So his is going to be a little bit more work, but it'll be well worth it. And I think in a moment you're going to see how this all works. Again, if you can't reach the bottom of your page, you could certainly line it up with a grid paper. All right, stick with me. I know I'm taking a lot of time today, but um, it's worth the, the watch, okay? And I'm recording this. So you can go back and watch. Um, so that's what I've got right now. Now I'm going to need to decide how high I want to make these walls. And for the sake of this, we're just going to go... Let's go right here. And now I'm going to follow what's below. Some of your linear perspective work that we did is going to help you in this quite a bit. I'm going to follow this angle now, and I'm going to try to maintain a parallel with that. So I'm always matching up to what was below. And using the grid paper whenever I can. So I start in one side, determine the height of the wall, and then work my way around. So this looks like sort of a mess right now, but what I usually do is take a scrap piece of grid paper and I lift up my little layer here, and what I do is I take a look at it like this so I can really see it all. 
And now I can really start to see it all. Um, I'm going to actually erase this line right here because that is now going to be inside and this is outside. So now I'm looking at the outside of, of, of Ethan's house. He's got a door here, he's got a, a window here with a sink. Um, so I'm going to have to look back to our floor plan and take a look at how he's got that laid out. So here's his door. I'm going to go back and bring my angle back in and I'm going to bring up the door with that same angle. And I think you're going to start to see how this axonometric is going to work. Um, and I have to bring it up right from the frame of it. And I'll put in the top of the door jam. I could even put in, if I want, the thickness of the wall if I'd like to. I could even put the top of the thickness of that wall if I really want to get fancy with my axon. Let me, let me show you a peek of what we got here. You guys see it? This is his front door. He, he's also got a window over his sink, which I think is a really good idea. That's a nice feature. His window is right here. He showed it right here and here on the floor plan. So when I bring that up, again, I got to use the same angle, match it up. Then we got to decide. Uh, this is where we got to show how big that window is and where it starts on the wall. I'm guessing because he's got a, a cabinet and a range and some, some countertop here, we'd probably have that window start up here somewhere. And um, I'm matching up with the floor plan, but I'm showing it on that wall outside. Again, I'll raise it up, and then we're just going to do the parallels here. And then Ethan's going to have to decide what kind of window this is. Is it one just, one just solid pane of glass? Again, it's kind of a constant, like, putting this back underneath so you can see it. Or is it going to be a divided light window? You know, where you have panes in here? You're going to have to decide that, Ethan. And you might also have to decide, um, you know, is it, is it up a little higher? Did you want just a very tall, narrow window up here? Or do you want one where people can look out while they're doing the dishes and cooking and prepping food? Okay, so as we continue with this, um, I'm going to just stop 